Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Today, my talk is going to have some gravity. So, I would like you to pay a close attention. For the last few days, I was watching some YouTube videos related to physics. And one of the most common questions that was asked to viewers was uh, related to gravity. And what better example the YouTubers can present than two balls? One of them was made out of wood or plastic and the other one was made out of iron or something like that. But it was really heavy for that much of volume. And it was asked to the viewers uh, which one is going to reach the ground first if they are dropped from the same height and at the same time. And most of them answered that the heavier one is going to reach the ground first and that actually disappointed me. So I decided that uh, I am going to try to remove some of the ignorance from the world that I can, especially about physics. So I'm going to remind you some ninth standard physics. Uh, I mean the law of gravitation. And for that, please allow me to make you the lab rat, hypothetically. Let us say that somewhere on Earth there's a tower. And if you are hanging from the tower, um, at a height 100 meters from the ground and your mass is 60 kilos well actually you don't need that number you can replace your mass with m if you remember from the ninth standard physics the force of gravitation between two masses can be calculated using the formula g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared where g is the gravitational constant M1 and M2 are the respective masses of the objects and R is the center to center distance between these two masses. Now we will replace the mass of Earth in place of M1 and your mass in place of M2 and R will be replaced by the center to center distance between you and Earth which is obviously the sum of the radius of Earth and your height. Now again I would like to remind you the relation between force and acceleration which has been derived from Newton's second law of motion. So the acceleration that you are going to go through if you are dropped from that height will be equal to uh, the force, the gravitational force between you and earth divided by your mass and the acceleration of earth because of that force towards you will be equal to uh, the gravitational force divided by the mass of earth now uh, if we replace the f from the equation 1 in equation 2 and 3 what we will notice that uh, your acceleration uh, will not depend upon your mass since your mass will be cancelled out and your acceleration will only depend on the mass of earth and the distance between uh, the center of earth and you and so will be the case in case of acceleration caused because of that force on earth. Uh, it, it will be independent of the earth's mass, it will depend only on your mass and the center to center distance between you and earth. And uh, since this uh, force, uh, the, the acceleration on earth is uh, really small, almost negligible, and also the earth is round, there is a maximum possibility that there is another person hanging or there is another mass uh, at, at same height where you are cancelling out uh, the force on the other side okay of, of the earth yeah uh, so if we do some calculation work and put the values of gravitational constant mass of earth and the radial distance between you and earth uh, we will see that we will we will always get a value which is approximately equal to 9.8 meters per second squared don't believe me try it out for different heights starting from 0 meters all the way to 500 meters and more. So uh, what you have learned from this part of uh, this video is that if you drop any two objects from a height, you will see them reaching the ground at the same time. For the reason, their acceleration is independent of their masses. It will only depend on the gravitational constant, the mass of Earth, and the center-to-center -center distance between the objects and the Earth. And now, in the second part of the video, we are going to look at a problem related to non-inertial frame of reference. Since in the last video, uh, I was explaining you 
the inertial frame of reference and how to solve the problems related to that. And I think it's the time for me to remind you that you have to pay a really close attention because it's going to be complicated guys. So in this example, we have an elevator car with a height of 2.7 meters from the ceiling to floor, which is accelerating with a rate of 1.2 meters per second squared in upwards direction, starting with an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. Two seconds after that, a bolt starts falling down from the ceiling of the elevator car. What we have to find in the problem is the time of free fall for the bolt and also displacement and distance the bolt covered during the whole process. Now, uh, since from the beginning the bolt was moving with the elevator, two seconds after the start of the elevator's acceleration, uh, the bolt will also reach the same velocity as that of elevator. So we can calculate it very easily. Using the first formula for motion in one line, which is V equals to U plus A times T, where V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity, A is the acceleration, and T is the time taken. So we will replace uh, the initial velocity with 0, acceleration with 1.2, and T with uh, 2. And we will get a velocity of 2.4 meters per second. Now we will look at the bolt from the frame of reference of the elevator car. Now we know that the distance the bolt have to cover in the frame of reference of the elevator car is 2.7 meters and the acceleration of the bolt is uh, 9.8 meters per second squared plus the acceleration of the car since it is in the opposite direction of the acceleration caused by the gravitational force. Uh, yeah, starting with an initial velocity of 0 meters per second for the bolt in the frame of reference of uh, the elevator car. So uh, we will solve it for the value of t uh, if we use the second formula for motion in one line which is s is equals to u times t plus half of uh, the acceleration times t squared where uh, s is the displacement, t is the time taken, u is uh, the initial velocity and a is acceleration. Now uh, we will put all the values uh, to solve it for the value of t and we will get a value of 0 0.99 seconds which will be the total time taken for the bolt to reach the floor of the elevator car. Keep it in mind that the bolt was initially at a velocity of 2.4 meters per second since it was accelerating along with the elevator car. The moment it started to fall down the elevator car was continuing its acceleration in upwards direction with a rate of 1.2 meters per second but the bolt is started to accelerate in the opposite direction which is uh, under the influence of gravity. So we can say that it was experiencing an acceleration of minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, so it is obvious that it will take some time to reach the velocity of 0 meters per second in upwards direction. Uh, and after that uh, the bolt will start falling down freely. We can calculate that time using the first formula for motion in one line. Uh, and we can subtract that time with the total time to get the free fall time. And here we go, that's the answer we are looking for. In the second part of the problem, uh, we have to calculate the displacement and the distance the bolt covered uh, in the frame of reference of the elevator shaft. And we all know that the elevator shaft is a fixed object and it is obvious that it is an inertial frame of reference at rest. Now if we make scales on the side of the elevator, uh, uh, we will see that uh, the moment the, bo uh, the bolt started to fall down in the frame of reference of uh, the elevator, but in the frame of reference of uh, the elevator shaft, uh, the bolt was moving with uh, a velocity of 2.4 meters per second in upwards direction and when it reached the velocity of 0 meters per second it took a time of 0 0.244 seconds uh, and it is obvious that it will come back at the same position in the same time since it will again experience the same acceleration only uh, in the positive direction with an increasing velocity. So after that its velocity will uh, again be 2.4 meters per second in downwards direction. 
so it will take 0 0.488 uh, seconds to reach at the same point mm. yeah so uh, uh, we can say we can calculate the uh, uh, height the um, elevator car covered uh, in that time starting with an initial velocity of 2.4 meters per second in upwards direction with an acceleration of 1.2 meters per second using the second formula for motion in one line that is s is equals to u times t plus half of uh, a times t squared we will get a value of 1.3 meters so the remaining distance the bolt will have to cover is 1.4 meters in the frame of reference of the elevator car. Now you should also keep it in mind that the velocity of the elevator will also increase in upwards direction in that time starting with an initial velocity of 2.4 meters per second. We can use the first formula for motion in one line which is v is equals to u plus a times t to get the value of final velocity and we will get a value of 2.98 meters per second so the relative velocity of the bolt at that instant will be the sum of the velocity of the bolt and the velocity of the elevator car since both of them are moving in opposite directions Now we can again use the second formula for motion in one line which is s the displacement is equal to u times t plus half of acceleration times t squared where t is the time and u is the initial velocity. Now for this case the initial velocity of the bolt relative to the elevator is 5.38 meters per second and the acceleration is 9.8 plus 1.2. 2 meters per second is squared since the bolt is accelerating in downwards direction and the elevator is accelerating in upwards direction and we can solve this equation for the value of t and we will get a value of 0 0.213 seconds now we will again look at the bolt in the frame of reference of the elevator shaft and we will calculate the displacement that it covered in that frame of reference with an initial velocity of 2.4 meters per second in the time of 0.213 seconds with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared under the influence of gravity using the second formula for motion in one line and here we go we have got the value of displacement in the frame of reference of the elevator shaft which is 0.73 meters pretty close to the answer now to get the value of the distance that the bolt would have to cover in the frame of reference of the elevator shaft we have to calculate the distance it covered while going upwards before reaching the velocity of 0 meters per second and then we will multiply it with 2 to get the total distance that it had to cover before reaching the velocity of 2.4 meters per second in downwards direction under the influence of gravity. And then we will add this with the value of displacement that we have calculated to get the value of distance. And here we go, we have a value of 1.3 meters. Again, it is pretty close to the answer. So if you have not noted it down, uh, you can go to the link in the description for the image of my rough work and you can note it from there, which is, you know, uh, too much fair. You can understand things from that. In the end, as always, I would like to request you to like, share and subscribe.